Sexual assault, it's a hot button issue plaguing campuses across the country. But now one school's honor code may be complicating an already devastating situation, making survivors too afraid to come forward, fearing expulsion. What's worse, sexual predators may be using that very fear against them. Two brave women share their stories, trying to break the code of silence. The locals call it Happy Valley, home to Brigham Young University and the Mormon lifestyle it reveres. But for some survivors of sexual assault, it's anything but happy. Margot Crandall grew up in the tradition, which holds a woman's chastity and virtue as paramount. It's why, she says, when a stranger got hold of a compromising photo of her, she says he was able to use it to lure her into a trap. He had stalked me on the internet and contacted me and more or less blackmailed me into meeting up with him. A brutal assault came next. He had just hit me a lot. Um, and while he was raping me, he had bound me. She finally managed to escape, but his terrorizing didn't end there. After it was over, he told me that he had taken another photo or video to make me keep seeing him. When you ran out of there, did you think, I'm going to run straight to the police? No, I didn't want anyone to find out. I was scared if the police found out, then BYU would find out. Why did you, in particular, not want BYU to know? Because I was afraid of their honor code. I was afraid that it would be seen as my fault and that I would get kicked out of school. The honor code, the strict Mormon-based rules governing life at Brigham Young University, outlining modest dress, no caffeine, no alcohol, no porn, and no premarital sex. Students can be expelled for violating the code. Margot says her rapist believed BYU students live in fear of the honor code. He knew how to use the honor code as a weapon mm -hmm. against you. Yeah. If people know that BYU girls are going to be afraid to report something like that, that really puts a target on our backs. Which is why some BYU students say they're going public with very private stories of sexual assault. They say the school's honor code can shame some rape survivors into silence. Honestly, I was hoping that I wouldn't make it out of there. I felt so much shame. Literally, you wanted to die. Yeah. But within days, her rapist sent her an email. Margot says this time threatening her with those new images he'd taken during the attack. Margot says that was her breaking point. My dad was downstairs and he came into my room and asked me what had happened. And I told him and he was then incredibly supportive. Her father, David Crandall, is also a professor at BYU. I'm glad that she had the strength to want to prosecute the case, to face her rapist. Knowing that my dad believed me and that was what I needed to go to the police. Going to the authorities about her alleged sexual assault wasn't easy for Maddie Barney either. We were in the police station at Provo Police, and I was just sobbing that I could not report because I knew that BYU was going to find out. Maddie says the officer assured her the police wouldn't tell BYU. So she worked up the courage to file a police report against Nasiru Saidu, accusing him of rape. He has pled not guilty. She thought she was going on a date with a young single guy. He lied about his age and marital status. He lied about everything, his name. Turns out, Saidu was a married 39-year-old youth soccer coach. She says in the post-traumatic weeks that followed, her high grade point average began slipping. Some days you have panic attacks and you can't breathe, and some nights you have nightmares. But despite those assurances of privacy from police, BYU got a copy of Maddie's rape report. Maddie says she soon found herself answering questions from BYU's Title IX investigator. No, I don't recall, you know, breaking the honor code. And she goes, well, we have your police report. And I go, you know, excuse me? Like, how, how did you get that? It was leaked to BYU by a sheriff's deputy. Across the country, Title IX offices are supposed to be of service to rape survivors. We're not concerned about the minor alcohol violation. We are not concerned about the uh, fact that you had a boy in your room. Brett Sokolow is a national consultant on Title IX issues. We as an institution feel ethically and legally obligated to do everything we can to help you in that situation. Instead, Maddie says, the BYU Title IX officer seemed more interested in her potential honor code violations. Did they in any way try to help you stay in school? They told me that they could not give me the services that they would provide a rape victim 
because they could not prove that I had been raped. We reached out to Brigham Young and they told us when a student reports a sexual assault, the primary focus is on the victim's safety and well-being under the Title IX policy. A report of sexual assault would always be referred to the BYU Title IX office, not to the Honor Code office. In a taped statement by BYU, President Kevin Worthen says the university is studying the relationship between their Title IX office and their Honor Code office. We recognize that there's some tension between those two, that there are some victims of sexual assault who already may feel like they don't want to come in, and that sometimes the fear of what's going to happen may keep them from coming in. What we want to do is minimize that as much as possible. Maddie says she was told if she didn't cooperate with the Honor Code investigation, she'd be barred from registering for future classes. Title IX spoke as if they were the Honor Code. She said to me, if you don't let us investigate this, then we're going to pass this information along to the Honor Code office. It felt like blackmail. Maddie has since launched an online petition demanding that BYU offer amnesty from honor code infractions when students report sexual assault. I don't understand why BYU isn't taking a step back and saying, hmm, you know, it's much better to keep a young woman who's a victim in school than let her rapist walk around. If you don't have an official policy of amnesty, then victims may hesitate to come forward because the possibility that they could be subject to discipline creates a chilling effect on reporting. Advocates say the way BYU's honor code is enforced makes an already painful ordeal that much more excruciating. Rape kits are really tough to go through. Yeah, it was really traumatic having to be naked in front of someone again, having them um, take pictures of all your injuries. And yet less than 40% of rape kits collected in Utah actually get sent to the crime lab, according to a study by BYU professor Julie Valentine, who feels it's putting women in jeopardy. I think that is a huge public safety concern. We're finding as more and more kits are tested that we're identifying serial rapists. Many times these are the undetected rapists in our community. In fact, Margot's rapist was accused a decade earlier of what a source close to the case characterizes as a similar assault, although that accusation was dropped. I read the police report 10 years later and it was almost word for word, like what he did to me. So it just makes me think how many girls were there between me and her. Reporting sexual assault also gives victims the access to resources for therapy, the kind of support that Maddie Barney says has been her lifeline. And that's what worries me about, you know, people feeling like they can't report. You're not being able to talk about what happened. Then how are you going to get help? And BYU is preventing women from getting help for this. They're not looking at the bigger picture. Margot Crandall's rapist was convicted. His sentence, five years to life in prison. After dropping out, when she went to re-enroll at BYU, she says they only offered academic support after they had documentation that a rapist was found guilty. It seemed like until they would gotten proof that he was convicted, until that time, they weren't super friendly or nice or didn't really offer me any help. The school then helped her, she says, to re-enroll in classes and to change her failing grades to withdrawals. Now she's on track to graduate next spring. Her rapist, currently behind bars, is appealing. Margot and her father are hoping BYU will include an honor code amnesty clause for sexual assault cases. Why is it the right thing to do? We're talking about human beings. What we need is uh, the person who has been assaulted to be lovingly cared for. Blame is not helpful. No, it isn't. If I stayed silent, I think I would have carried that around with me for the rest of my life, whereas now I've been able to speak out about it um, in public a little bit more, and it's helped me heal. Our thanks to Maddie and Margot for sharing their stories.